Good evening, everyone. My name is Lauren Baker, Public Policy and Outreach Specialist for Disability Network Eastern Michigan. I want to thank you all for joining us for our transit town hall with a focus on mobility for people with disabilities. In order to provide an equitable experience for all, I'm going to give a visual description of myself. I'm a middle-aged white woman with shoulder length blonde hair. I'm wearing a black shirt sitting in a room with tan wall behind me. Disability Network Eastern Michigan is committed to promoting inclusion for all by breaking down barriers and opening paths towards independence and personal choice through resources, advocacy, information, support, and education. We have a distinguished panel of presenters tonight who will be sharing useful information about mobility resources in Southeastern Michigan. Together, the work that each one of us does helps towards our vision of being a community where those living with disabilities are empowered to pursue personal growth and choice through access to community resources and supportive services. The intent of this town hall is to create a fair and polite dialogue regarding the impact of transportation barriers for persons with disabilities. Our guests are encouraged to submit questions for our panelists through the chat, which will be answered at the conclusion of all of our presentations. We encourage a safe and inviting environment for all. We have wonderful presenters tonight from a variety of agencies and some consumer testimonials um, from those who ride the smart bus. Um, I would like to welcome Megan Owens, the executive director from Transportation Riders United to give a brief presentation on the work that her agency does. Hello everyone. My name is Megan Owens. I'm the director of Transportation Riders United, a nonprofit organization that has been working for 20 years on how can we get more and better transportation options all throughout the Southeast Michigan region. We believe everyone should be able to get where they need to go, regardless of whether they drive. Uh, but unfortunately, not enough of our region is built uh, with mobility in mind. Um, by way of description, uh, also a middle-aged white woman with uh, medium length brown hair and glasses. You can see a little bit of my, uh, of my kitchen in the background, uh, the joys of working from home. Um, but this is a very exciting time for public transportation. As many people know, we have a wide range, we, we do have a, a range of different transportation options available uh, for people with disabilities and for all of our residents uh, throughout much of the Macomb and Oakland County uh, areas. SMART provides uh, a really essential uh, tr uh, transportation option, as well as in a number of the uh, suburbs of Oakland, of uh, Wayne County as well. Um, those include uh, not only the fixed route buses, uh, the regular larger buses that everyone can use all across the region, but also uh, the, uh, the paratransit, uh, especially for seniors and people with disabilities who need a little extra help uh, to be able to get where they need to go. And this year, the funding for that, for those important services are gonna be on the ballot. Everyone in Macomb County will have an opportunity to vote on whether they want to maintain the smart bus services. The Macomb County public transit millage will be on the November ballot. Um, and in Oakland County for the first time, it is gonna be on the ballot all across the entire county. It used to be just certain towns in Oakland County were part of the public transit services, but now it is available all, it will be on the ballot all across the county. And if it does pass, services will be expanded to more communities across the county. So that'll be the Oakland County public transit millage that would support, uh, main, that would maintain the existing services and then also expand transit into more of uh, the county, including bus routes and paratransit and what's called microtransit. Um, we are working hard to educate people all across the region. A lot of people who don't personally utilize transit may not know um, about the options that are available. So we are proud to be 
uh, part of uh, a, an effort with many of the folks who are on the line today to communicate why transit is so important uh, all across our region uh, and to ensure that voters can be informed before they make their choices. Um, I look forward to uh, answering some more questions and discussing a few more ways people can get involved uh, later in the session. But at this point, I believe we're going to turn it over to uh, Leslie from SMART, who works specifically with their American with Disabilities Act team and can talk more specifically about the services that they provide. All right, thank you. Lauren, did you want me to share my screen or do you have the slides? Um, you could share your screen if Megan, you could make her presenter. Okay, yeah, I have a share screen button, but okay. I just wanna make okay. sure that was okay. Yeah. Oh, not my email, okay. <laughs> Okay, can everybody see the slides? Okay, Lauren, you good? Okay, so good evening, everyone. My name is Leslie Verstreet, and I am the supervisor of mobility services at SMART, which is just a fancy name of our ADA program. So I oversee the ADA eligibility process, the assessment process, as well as the travel training. Um, I put contact numbers all throughout the slide deck, but if you ever had any questions about ADA certification, our number's right here, 313-223-2193. That is a voicemail box. We do have an ADA team that has about five people on it, myself, two assessment coordinators, uh, travel trainers. So all of us get those voicemails. We respond to them within the same day, but one of us would call you back. ADA info at smartbus.org is a good email address to get to any one of us. And then our website is smartbus.org. Okay, so I'm going to briefly go through, I have quite a bit of slides, but I know I don't have a lot of time, so I'll briefly go through all of the different services of our program. The first one, the most basic one, is just our connector program, our general service. So this service is geared towards seniors and people with disabilities. It is an advanced reservation curb-to-curb -curb service for trips within a 10-mile radius within the opt-in communities. Like Megan was talking about, all of Macomb right now is opt-in. So you'd be able to go anywhere within a 10 mile radius in Macomb, all of the Oakland suburbs that are right now opt-in and the Wayne County suburbs, excluding Detroit. Connector does not do, Connector General Service does not go into Detroit. It operates Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. For reservations, six days in advance for medical trips. That's six business days. Two days in advance for everything else, grocery store, leisure, work, two days in advance. It is first come, first serve. First come, first serve basis for these trips. It is $1 for a senior or a person with a disability and $4 for a full fare rider. Now this service is geared towards seniors and people with disabilities. So we do have some stipulations on full fare riders. They do have to live farther than a third of a mile from a fixed route. Otherwise we tell them to take the fixed route option, but connector general service is there just kind of to fill in the gaps of where our fixed route is, is lacking or where our ADA bus does not, does not reach. And our customer service line to make reservations, 866-962-5515. And that number will be on all of the slides on the next one. All right. Our next service is our ADA program, the Americans with Disabilities Act program. You can see I have a picture of the bus and one of our riders in the corner. It is the same bus and the same drivers as our connector service. So when you call that customer service line, a lot of times they're going to ask you, are you booking your trip ADA or are you booking your trip general service? So that is the difference between the two services. So the ADA service, it does require an application process. You can download the application from our website and print it off to submit it or you can call us and we can mail you a paper application. At this time, the application is not an online submission. You do have to mail it in, get a licensed professional to fill out the second portion and get that in by mail to us. This program is an advanced reservation. This time it is up to 14 days. So it's a little bit of a premium service compared to the, the six days of the connector, curb to curb service, 
for those who are unable to use fixed route service because of a disability. So on the application, you're going to find a lot of questions asking about your, your traveling abilities and what prevents you from using fixed route. We do have an assessment process. Just because you're diagnosed with a disability does not mean you're automatically going to be certified for ADA. Everybody has different functional abilities, so that depends on the level of ADA that you're going to get. Some people get unconditional ADA where they can use the ADA bus 100% of the time because they can never use fixed route. But then there's others, a lot in between that sometimes they can use the fixed route, you know, if it's nice out and it's not in the winter or if their destination is really close on a fixed route and they don't have to walk a long distance, but other times they need the ADA bus. So there's a lot of variation in the, the different type of certifications that you'll get. The hours of operation and service area mirrors the fixed route bus service. So paratransit is just, all that means is parallel transportation. It is mimicking the fixed route. And I do have a couple maps on the next slide for you to see our service area buffer, but it's three quarters of a mile around the fixed route. So if you have a fixed route that goes by your house late at night, that means the ADA bus can go late at night. If you have a fixed route bus by your house that goes on the weekends, then an ADA rider also would be able to go on the weekends. The ADA fare is $3 each way. It is not discounted like that connector dollar ride. You get a PCA for free, a personal care attendant. And when you're booking ADA, you have the option to request door-to-door -door assistance when you're booking the $3 ADA trip. We do like riders to request what kind of assistance they need from the driver beforehand, whether that's pushing a manual wheelchair up and down a ramp, that could be simply holding a door for you, that could be providing arm guidance up to a door, and, but you can ask the driver the day of if you need some sort of assistance. Connector General Service does not do that. So ADA does provide that little extra, extra help. Two book rides is the same number as uh, Connector General Service, the 866-962-5515. And you can also email your trips in if you're ADA certified. The email address is ADA scheduling at smartbus.org. So, ADA corridor. So here is a good example of a zoomed in area of our, of our ADA service area. One's pickup and destination must be within three quarters of a mile of a fixed route bus. We actually, our schedulers and customer service reps, they measure it on the map. So obviously these are not to scale, but we do measure to make sure everything is in within this buffer. You must be traveling when the fixed route bus operates. So for example, if you're going to Macomb Academy here, we on the weekday, this 550 bus runs. So if, let's say you're coming from Macomb Mall and you wanna get an ADA trip from Macomb Mall to Macomb Academy on the weekday, you can do that because this 550 goes on the weekday. But if you call on a Sunday and say, I wanna go from Macomb Mall to Macomb Academy, you cannot because an able body rider on fixed route would not be able to take that same trip. It's supposed to be, it's equal, equivalent, paratr ADA paratransit is equivalent to the fixed route. This is also, this map is a good example of the, the gaps in the service area. These, these white areas here in Mount Clemens that doesn't have fixed route or around Shaner, no ADA service area. That's a good, that's a good filler for connector. So if you live outside of the ADA area, we do have that connector option for you. And this is just a very zoomed out. I just wanted to add this in here to show how big our service area is. We operate in Macomb, Oakland, and Wayne counties. It's, a, I think, 1,100 square miles. And you can sort of see that three quarter of a mile buffer around all the fixed route. So an ADA rider could potentially go from Chesterfield up in 23 mile all the way down to Trenton on the ADA bus. You you'd probably have to transfer a few times, but wow. if you can take that fixed route trip, they could take an ADA fixed route, route trip that far where connector is only that 10 mile radius. All right, moving on to the newest one, Smart Flex. So SmartFlex is an on-demand shuttle service 
using the Smart Flex phone app. So most rides are only $2. They start at $2 and that gives you a five mile trip. And then it starts increasing a little bit as you go over those five miles, but you'll never hit over $8. If you do select on the app when you're creating your profile that you have a disability, you'll get you'll start at the base fare of 50 cents. Just like the fixed route, it has reduced fare of 50 cents. The flex rides would start at 50 cents for the first five miles, and they would tack on, I think, 40 cents per mile after that. Request a ride any day of the week, and you'll have the flexibility to get where you need to go anywhere in the following zone. So I have five different zones that I'm going to show you. If you do not have a smartphone to book rides by the app, there is a phone number. Or if you ever have issues booking a trip through the app, you can always call this phone number, 734. 212-8429, and that will get you to the Flex customer service, and they can book your trips over the phone. But it is same day on-demand service that operates seven days a week. All of the zones except one are 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. One of the zones starts at 5 a.m., and I'll show you which ones those are. So the first zone here, we call it the Dearborn Zone, covers all of Dearborn, but it does cover Melvindale, Allen Park, goes down next to Lincoln Park, next to Southgate. I think there's part of Taylor down here, depending where it goes. But it's a pretty big area. It sort of fills the gap. Smart Flex is a microtransit that's meant to cover the first last mile. So we, we started with it just in Dearborn. We realized, well, this area in the middle here by Allen Park does not have fixed route. So if somebody lives, let's say by Wick and Pelham, they don't have fixed route near them. They can book a flex ride, maybe get dropped off somewhere near, near Telegraph, and then hop on the Telegraph bus to take the rest of their trip. So it's meant to be a connection to get you out of those zones, but you can also take take trips within those zones, and it takes you to different different transit uh, hubs. So that zone, six a.m. to eleven p.m., seven days a week. Very very good hours. Hall Road zone is our biggest zone. If you're not familiar with Hall Road, it is like a 10 lane highway, not conductive to fixed route at all by any means, not very pedestrian friendly to go across 10 lanes of, you know, with a barrier and you have to go across five lanes on each side, not pedestrian friendly. So this is a perfect micro transit zone. Anywhere in this purple, you can, you can catch a micro or a flex ride take it to a fixed route stop, and then continue on your trip. Or if your, your destination's anywhere within this purple zone, we can take you in there. Macomb Academy, we take a lot of our ADA riders go to Macomb Academy. It is in the flex zone. And I know they do job training, so they could take flex to some of their jobs within the zone. Our Troy and Clawson zone. So this one was put in place instead of our Somerset. We had a Somerset Mall shuttle and an Oakland mall shuttle. This is what that replaced. So it's covering the southern half of the southern end of Troy, covering that big beaver corridor, covers most of Clawson. We did include the hospital because that's a big, a big area to go to. And we did include the transit center. Just again, to cover that first last mile, if you're going up Woodward, you can stop at the transit center and you can get micro transit to your final destination within Troy. Either the malls or Pontiac, this is our busiest zone. It covers the Oakland University. We have Great Lakes Crossing up there, a couple hospitals, but it's a good, it's a good zone because we have a lot of fixed route there. And then you can take your micro transit, the, you know, the, the last part of your trip. 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. for Pontiac. And then our newest zone is Farmington and Farmington Hills. This replaced our dialer ride that the connector bus was operating. We decided to switch it to a flex zone because our uh, Farmington dialer ride was only five days a week from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. This opened it up for seven days a week all the way until 11 p.m. So they get more service hours in that zone, but it just covers the exact line of Farmington and Farmington Hills. And my next one, I'm going to pass it to Bonica to give a brief, because I know we're running out of time, a brief description on our travel, our new travel training program. 
Hi, I'm Panika, and I am the mobility specialist. And so I work with um, the disabled population, whether young or old, um, whether it's cognitive, physical, or emotional disabilities. And I train them how to safely, independently use the fixed route bus. Um, I do incorporate um, flex services if you are in that zone. Um, so I'll show a, a rider how to use the flex services to, to get to the bus stop, um, especially if it's a, a long distance. Um, I work with them on their level. And so my first assessment that I come out, I just start trying to see how much you know about um, riding the bus. Um, we go over those two safety tools. We go over um, what you're looking for and what you're trying to use the bus for. Um, so it's at your pace. Um, currently, I think I have about 10 to 12 um, customers right now, and um, each one of them are at different levels. And so, like I said, it's at your pace. Um, I enjoy it. The customers enjoy it, and they feel more independent that they're learning going from either connector and learning how to ride fixed route, something that they have never done before. So. If you have any questions, if you're interested, um, travel training at smartbus.org. You can send inquiries there. You can even dial the number 248-419-7968 and I will be make sure to respond back to you. Thank you. Thank you. And then our last slide is just again, those phone numbers, customer service, reservations. They can do fixed route questions. They can do connector questions, ADA questions. That number is 866-962-5515. Our website is a great resource, smartbus.org. It has all of those maps on there if you're interested in Flex, how to download it. It has the ADA application, all of that information that was just in the slides. And then if you had specific questions for the ADA team or the travel training team, um, our number again to the ADA hotline is 313-223-2193 where you can email ADA info at smartbus.org. Great, and then let me maybe stop my share. If I can ask a couple of questions that have come in yes. the chat, uh, yeah. or in the, well, the chat, the chat is now open, the uh, and the, in the Q&A, um, there was a question, uh, what's the ages for attendant care companions for ADA service? Any Are there? Okay. It can be it can be any age. Okay, um, that's great to know. Um, and are ADA services only for residents of the opt-in communities of current smart communities, or can it be for anyone traveling along the corridors? That is a good question. No, you do not have to be a resident of the opt-in communities. We do get a lot of people that apply. You know, in Livonia and those bordering cities, we just. On your approval letter, it will say, you know, you're in an opt-in out community. Our bus does not go to your house, but we we would love to transport you as long as you get into the ADA service area somehow. And then we can take you from point A to point B if need. Okay. That's great to know. Um, the there was some question, the connector is the connector usable by non-disabled, non-senior people. So connector. Yes can be used by anyone, right? It can be used by anyone, but that is considered the full fare rider. There are stipulations. Your house and your destination have to be farther than a third of a mile from fixed route. Otherwise, we're going to tell you to take fixed route. So I live up in Shelby Township. I am not near a fixed route. And if I called Connector, they could pick me up, but they would say, well, I'm going to take you to the Van Dyke bus at 23 mile, and then you'll have to take the rest of the way. So it is available, but it's first come, first serve. The ADA bus fills up a lot of our reservations. So, but it, it is there on availability. Okay. Um, the, uh, let's see. For medical appointments, what's the protocol for return trips when the appointment is finished for a senior citizen, for example? That is a good question as well. You have to book both directions when you make your reservation. So I always tell people when you call your doctor to make the appointment, ask them how long it is, tell them that you're going to be taking the bus. They'll tell you if it's going to be an hour appointment, maybe give yourself an hour and a half or an hour and 15, depending on how, how familiar you are with that office and if they run over, but you have to book there and back all at the same time. 
Okay. And one more before we move on. Um, how do you accommodate trips that are not able to be completed within the hours of operation? Um, uh, is there anything you can do if somebody's uh, if an appointment so, runs outside of a your schedule or we, if appointments run long, for example? Well, we won't let you schedule outside of the fixed route hours, but at the same time, if it runs over, we're not going to leave you out there. If we took you to the appointment and ran over, but yeah, we're not going to, we, we abide by those schedules. We might tell you to contact the a community partner bus or some other mode of transportation, but it's got to be within the hours of fixed route. That makes a lot of sense. And actually, parallel, yeah, parallel and equal, equal transportation. So we're not trying to provide better service than fixed route. It's, it's got to be equal. And actually, that might be a great segue over to our friends at My Ride 2 mm -hmm. to share a little bit about their service uh, and how they help people find other options to fill in those gaps where um, SMART may not always be able to. Okay, you ready? Um, all right. Uh, first, I'm going to see if you can, uh, if I can share my screen and if you can see it. Um, yeah. that didn't work. Mm. Let's see. It is not letting me pick that. Let me, Lauren, do you have my slides also? Well, Megan, do you have them handy? I have them as well. So I can pull them up for I can you. Try and pull them up here a different way. Okay. But if you guys have them, it would be easier. Oh, sure. Just let me know. Okay. Nope. Let me see. Oh, great. Wonderful. Thank you. Can you go up? Whoops. Can you go up one? There we go. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Roberta Habowski, and I am a mobility project advisor. And uh, I'm with My Ride 2, which is a mobility management service. We are located within the area agency on aging 1B. Uh, we cover Oakland, Macomb, Washtenaw, and Wayne counties. And um, that is our phone number and website, which I will put in the chat um, in a minute or two. Our website is myride2.com, M-Y-R-I-D-E, the number two, .com. And our phone number is 855-697-4333. Um, we work with seniors and adults with disabilities. So next slide, please. So a little bit about a mobility management service. We are a one call, one click mobility management service. We do have the website. We also have a toll free phone line that is, uh, has multilingual and TTY services available. We, the website is interactive. You can search for providers on the website, get information on the website. You can type in your zip code and if you need uh, for instance, wheelchair transportation or any other specifics, you can pull that up on your own. We do also offer travel training and um, the same as SMART, we will train someone no matter their skill level and uh, the, the same uh, sort of situation, we'll go out and meet you, we'll help you, you know, if you need to go from your home to a certain destination, uh, if you need to just you know, get familiar with it, we can help with that as well. We also off, offer older driver safety information and then also help um, when an uh, older driver retires from driving and that would be the transportation piece. We also routinely review, print out, highlight and mail out those SMART ADA forms. 
uh, and for uh, DDOT as well. So we can help uh, with those if needed. We um, can tra transfer calls to providers, uh, not every time, but um, sometimes. We can help schedule rise. We confirm costs and availability for you all ahead of time. Uh, as I said, we're available in Oakland, Macomb, or I'm sorry, yes, Oakland, Macomb, Washtenaw, and Wayne. We do not actually supply the transportation, but if you call in and give us all your information, we can give you your options. Um, a lot of times, um, the least expensive option is the public bus service, SMART or DDOT. But um, as I believe um, a lot of us know that they do book up, um, which Leslie mentioned, and also they only operate during the fixed bus schedules. So we can help you find other options that might be, be available to you. We can um, check with you on prices and what you need specifically. We can check all that and then call you back and um, you don't have to like spend your time doing that. Uh, next slide, please. So again, mobility management, we focus on the individual. We focus on your whole trip, not just uh, to one point. We focus on how you're going to get there and back. If you need to cross county lines, um, everything that's involved in that trip. Maybe you need to make a stop in between places, we help with that as well. We do offer the centralized information. We're very person-centered. Um, we And again, we incorporate driving education, awareness and cessation, public, private, and volunteer transportation options. And oh, we're sort of a one-stop shopping for mobility needs. Next slide, please. So this is a, just a screenshot of our website. You can see the different headings at the top. Uh, near the lower right, you can see where you would put a zip code in and you can pull up those options yourself. Um, or we, we are very happy to help you. We have mobility specialists who are very knowledgeable on what options are available and they are happy to help you out. I will type in the chat, myride2.com and our number which is 855-697-4332. It also, the phone number also spells out my ride too. So M-Y-R-I-D-E-2. I do have um, one of our mobility specialists and travel trainers on the line also. So if we have any um, other questions that she can be able to help with that if it's something that I can't answer. And that's it. Thank you so much, Roberta, for that information. My Ride 2 is a wonderful service. I work there for many years, one day a week as a mobility specialist to provide transportation options. And um, we are very happy to have you here, Leslie and Bonica, with us tonight. Um, we're going to move on to our next presenter, Mr. John Waterman, who is the executive director for PEAC. P-E-A-C, which is an acronym for Persons Educating All Cyclists. And I know we have Taria here as well from Peak. So if John or Taria would like to. Actually, John might be logged in under a different name. John, if you are on, can you please go to the raise your hand function and we can make you a panelist? Um, ah, there we go. We had uh, a number of people, uh, a whole bunch of people got entered, got, got, uh, logged in under uh, under chip. So John, did you want to um, share a little something? More than more than anything. <gasps> thank you guys so much. Uh, the, you guys found me out of the mirage of names and numbers. Well great work team. Um, Peak is an organization that's dedicated to the empowerment of individuals with disabilities through active modes of transportation biking, busing, and walking. The challenge um, we are facing and working with is individuals with cognitive impairments, uh, the, their access to transportation really is educational and training based. We've heard discussions from travel trainers 
and two, two different travel trainers here. Um, an individual who uses a wheelchair with, a, uh, with, with an average or above average intelligence, the wheelchair lift makes that bus uh, safe for them to travel and gives them the route. An individual with a cognitive impairment needs some more training to use the system and to be independent. Um, working with SMART, that is something we've been able to do and offer programs for individuals uh, through our Medicaid-based programming and through a project with the local school districts uh, where we go into the school districts and work with groups of students to teach them how to travel independently. Um, we've had a lot of uh, great students come through our program in the past. Uh, the key is taking the time and learning um, what it takes to travel. Also, we believe individuals are gonna face challenges of traveling. Our students are gonna get lost. Our students are gonna have uh, times where they miss a bus and uh, setting up all those trainings and making sure they're able to do that and complete that really is part of being independent. Um, we don't recognize anybody as an independent traveler until they have been lost and have had to uh, do an emergency call and go from place to place. Um, I would like to give Tria the opportunity um, to talk a little bit about um, one of her trips. And I think a very unique trip was um, what happens if it doesn't all work out and what are some of the challenges you could face? Um, Tria, could you talk about the time uh, you were trying to get to work and uh, the roads are flooded? Oh uh, yeah, one day, one day I was um, walking to the bus stop and there wasn't like a detour, there was a detour for the cars, but there wasn't a detour for the pedestrians so they could catch the next bus. Oh. So I had to, I had oh. to call off work. And, and so Tria, uh, what did your uh, boss feel about that? Not happy. And how much, how about you personally? I was upset. You're upset. And that really connects as we start talking about transit. Um, do we need more buses, Tria? Yes, we do. Do we need them to go to more places? Yes. More often? Yep. Yeah, and, and I have to say, when I hear 1,100 square miles, and I hear all this, all these challenges of what uh, the smart bus system has to do with the funding they have, what do you think about the smart bus? I love riding it. <laughs> do you feel independent? Yes. If the smart bus wasn't there, what would happen? Well, I didn't have no way to get around. You would, so oh. you, you mean all this work and being coming independent, you couldn't, then you really couldn't go shopping. You couldn't be on your own, right? Right. Could you work a job? Nope. Oh, and so this is your lifeline. This is your means of transportation. Tria, we just learned about something last Friday. Do you remember that meeting we had with Smart? Yes. What, what type, what vehicles were they talking about? The flex car. Yeah. Are we, are we excited? Yeah. We really see this as a means of, of, of greater independence, that first, that last mile. And sometimes even that later time, because I was hearing it operates to like till 11 o'clock. And that means if you were working somewhere late and you're doing that, pulling that later shift, you could get home, right? Yes. Excellent. Tria, thank you so much for sharing and, and being so patient there and uh, wondering if I was going to get on or not and leave you hanging. You did an amazing <laughs> job and uh, I'm just glad to be working with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, John and Taria, for sharing your story. And you have demonstrated nope. how no important no to out. your independence it is that you are able to ride public transit. So thank you so much for sharing. Our last, our last presenter tonight, panelist, is Kristen Malefchek. She is a vaccine advocate for Disability Rights Michigan. And we'd love to have her share some words um, in her experiences riding public transportation. So Kristen, if you could please uh, share, we'd love it. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I'm Kristen Malefchuk. Um, I have chin length, uh, blonde hair. Um, I have a Disability Rights Michigan logo for my background. Um, and I'm wearing a green shirt. Um, I also am here wearing more than one hat because 
um, as well as working with Disability Rights Michigan. Um, I am a person with a disability. I have a form of muscular dystrophy um, and I am a lifelong wheelchair user and I'm not able to drive myself. Um, so unfortunately in my personal life, my experiences have been um, living in areas in uh, Oakland County where I did not have access um, to transportation. Um, and so I can tell you about some of the personal challenges I experienced with that. Um, I, for every major accomplishment that I have in my life, I have at least one transit story that goes along with it that was a challenge, a hurdle to overcome. Um, so uh, when I first went to college, for instance, at Oakland University, um, I was uh, nearing the end of a semester and my adapted vehicle that I have to use to get around um, broke down. And it was too close to the end of the semester um, for me to withdraw from classes. Um, so I ended up taking a zero in three classes um, because it was at the very end of the semester and I did not have the money um, to get my vehicle repaired because that's very costly. Um, and so fortunately, um, when I went back to school later, um, I was able to appeal um, because my GPA, uh, that those, those grades were, could be changed. Um, but uh, it, it was definitely um, a disappointing experience and um, it would have been so nice <laughs> to have had a, a transportation option like all of the ones that we've heard about today available um, so that I didn't have to go through all that and all the trouble that came along with it. Um, also, a thing that a lot of people don't realize, I think, um, about why people with disabilities don't just have a vehicle and have someone else drive one is because is that uh, adapted vehicles for people with disabilities are often a lot more costly than a typical vehicle. And uh, to give you an example, I recently uh, purchased my first house um, and I decided because I was at a place in my life where I'm earning money and um, I, my credit is good that I was going to check out uh, adaptive vehicles <laughs> online. And um, one of the providers that I looked at that, that makes these adaptive vehicles, wheelchair adaptive vehicles, um, many of their, their vehicles were more expensive than my first house. <laughs> so um, it's, it's very unrealistic for a lot of people to, to purchase a vehicle um, if they have a disability because it's just too expensive. But even if somebody um, is able to, to get their own vehicle, uh, it's also hard to not put a lot of wear and tear on your vehicle. If you think about the average person, they're going to use their own vehicle most of the time. But there are going to be times that they're going to ride with friends, with family, et cetera. Many people like me that have a, a wheelchair that can't be broken down and put into a, a regular car uh, or regular vehicle don't have that option. Um, so it's just really uh, a, a nice thing when people have these mobility options available to them. Um, I would say that I've also spoken with many other people with disabilities that do use um, public transportation and use smart services. Um, and it's great for them. Um, it's a lot of times it's the difference between being able to go to school, being able to go to get a job, um, et cetera, that they wouldn't have otherwise. And so I can also say from a professional perspective uh, that what I do with uh, Disability Rights Michigan 
with helping people get access um, to vaccines who might not have them ordinarily is that some of the people that have received homebound um, shots through us, their main barrier to being able to get um, a vaccination at a traditional site uh, was transportation. And so if, if you can imagine the impact that this has on people um, who can uh, drive themselves, that it would go to the extreme of them not can, being able to get something so basic and necessary as uh, healthcare and vaccinations, um, then you might be able to understand why it's so important um, for people to have these options. And I love that we have information about how you can get specialized help, customized training about the, the options that are available to you. I think that's wonderful. Thank you. That is wonderful for sharing. Uh, Kristen, really appreciate it. Um, and I, uh, I will add, Kristen's also a board member of Transportation Riders United. We are thrilled to have her on our team helping us share, um, help, helping us understand uh, what the transportation needs are and helping uh, to spread the word in so many great ways. Um, I want to share a few, uh, I want to share a few uh, final slides before we wrap up um, to that I hope folks can see. So I think people have gotten the sense. SMART provides a super essential service, um, providing for tens of thousands of people daily um, uh, of all sorts of different uh, abilities, capabilities, um, ages, race, color, um, in across a very, very wide region. Um, and it's important to note, we also have other providers like DDOT in the city of Detroit also provides a lot of important services. Um, we've gotten a glimpse of just how, how many different places the smart, SMART can take you, whether that is on a traditional large bus, uh, if that's something that works for you, on a connector or ADA bus or using their brand new uh, flex service uh, in these specific flex zones. But it's important to realize uh, that SMART has not been able to provide service to the whole region, uh, not by their choice, but because a lot of towns have chosen not to um, be a part of that. All of Macomb has been, but only these green areas on this map, um, and for anyone who can't see, uh, it includes much of Southeast Oakland County from Pontiac South and Farmington Hills East, has transit services uh, served by SMART, but a lot of the northern and western parts of the county uh, have not had that service, uh, have not had that uh, direct service. Now, there are a variety of local providers uh, in different communities that SMART partners with to provide vehicles for things like the uh, North Oakland Transportation Authority, WOTA, the West Oakland Transportation, the Western Oakland Transportation Authority, and the Older Persons Commission. But each of them work just within their own boundaries and within limited hours. And it can be difficult if you want to get from one of these communities to another, and our lives don't end at our city or our town's borders. So this year, as I mentioned, uh, what's uh, one of the exciting things is that we will finally have transit on the ballot countywide, not just in Macomb County, but in all of Oakland County as well. Uh, and while the details of, of the service that would be provided are still being worked out, the o leaders of Oakland County uh, would ensure that we not only keep and support the current transit provider, so replace the existing smart millage, and fund the great work done by NOTA, WOTA, and the Older Persons Commission, but it would also extend transit options across the county for the uh, essential paratransit services, as well as microtransit, uh, like an Uber type van, the flex route, and the fixed route, with the real the goal of 
eliminating the gaps to ensure people can get anywhere they need across uh, Oakland County for schools, jobs, uh, shopping, or to visit friends or family or, or other loved ones. Um, so while the, the details are not finalized, there could be uh, fixed route buses traveling all the way up through Orion and Oxford or out to Clarkston. There may be connections between Waterford and Commerce, Wald Lake, Wixom, uh, service extending, not just stopping at Farmington Hills, but connecting through Novi and out to South Lyon. Now, the details of this still need to be worked out, uh, and it will take a couple of years to get this developed, but the goal is to make sure there's transit that can finally connect places that have the des des density <laughs> destinations and demographics. Um, and again, to expand uh, different paratransit services all across the county and make it easier to connect between communities uh, and not have uh, these, these borders stopping where people can go. So if you're interested in learning more, again, smartbus.org, or 866-962-5515 are great ways to talk with the folks at SMART, uh, both to find out about things like um, ADA eligibility, uh, to if you have complaints or problems, uh, they need to hear about it. They can't always tell what's happening out uh, across those 11,000 miles or whatever it was. Um, so they need to hear when things aren't working as well as when things are working right. My organization can be found at DetroitTransit.org. Uh, and if you wanna learn more about a campaign to build support um, for the transit ballot measure, there's a Keep Smart Rolling website and Facebook page. So uh, I really appreciate everyone who has been on this panel today. Uh, Again, if there are other questions that people have, please feel free to put them in the chat. We'll take just a couple more minutes to answer a few additional questions. And I'd also like to ask our panelists um, yeah, if they'd yeah. like to make any uh, any final comments or, um, or have anything that you'd like to add. Lauren, is there anything you'd like to... To add. I just would like to thank you, Megan, for uh, co-hosting this Disability Transit Town Hall. I'm really pleased to see that we've had so many people join us tonight. This will be recorded, so this can be shared with other people after um, who were unable to join us tonight to learn about all of these options um, from My Ride to Smart Peak and um, Disability Rights Michigan. Thank you so much for all of our panelists tonight. Absolutely. And, um, there was also a question that came in, when can we see a partnership between Detroit's Metrolift uh, and the connector service uh, or the or SMART's uh, ADA services to transport people outside of Detroit or into the city? Um, can you say anything, Leslie, about the connections? Yeah. How do you work with, with uh, Metrolift if people need to travel between the city and SMART's communities? Sure, so we do we do connect with them all the time. If you live in the suburbs and you want to travel into Detroit, you call SMART because you're out in the suburbs. You tell them your starting location and your ending location, even though it's in Detroit. And they, while you're on the phone call, will do a three-way phone call with Metrolift and they will coordinate the transfer while you're on the phone all together. So it's, it's done very smoothly and they'll tell you the times and where you're going to be transferring. If you are a Detroit resident, you start with Metrolift first. You tell them I'm going up into the suburbs they will contact our scheduling, a three-way call again while you're on the phone line, and we will coordinate where that transfer will take place. And I know he's, he mentioned like a combined fare structure like DART, because the DART passes are able to use on DDOT fixed route and smart fixed route. I don't know when those fares are going to be able to be used on ADA bus. I think we need new fare boxes for that <laughs> to happen, but hopefully soon. So okay. That question. Okay, so we still need a little, a little more to be worked on in terms of right. um, making that uh, as as seamless as possible. But yeah. um, but that is important to note that that you're not completely on your own. Uh, there are people absolutely do uh, regularly connect between uh, Detroit and uh, smart communities, uh, both on the fixed route. Uh, the fast buses are a seamless way to connect. Um, 
or on the with the ADA uh, paratransit. Um, Leslie, any uh, final comments or that you want to share, uh, Leslie or uh, Benita, that you guys want to share before we wrap up? No, but thank you for for having me join you. Wonderful. Um, and again, we've, I think we've shared the number a couple of times, but if there are questions or um, certain complaints or uh, uh, or things that are needed, the 866-962-5515 is a great, uh, they can connect you anywhere within the system. Um, so we if we don't know about it, you know, we can't fix it. So definitely use that number and they'll transfer it to the right department. If it's an ADA issue, it will come to my team, but always use that number. Great. Um, I believe Stephen Howring wanted to um, ask a question or share a comment. I know you've been waiting patiently, Stephen. Would you like to share something before we wrap up? Um, I actually, I think, accidentally pressed the hand. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. No problem. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Robert, um, let's see, Robert Pulowski, um, uh a passionate transit activist. Uh, anything you want to share? Thank you, Megan, for those lovely words. Uh, I just wanted to say, uh, give a big shout out to John Waterman. Um, I was actually able to stop by the organization's office in Lincoln Park last week, and I was very impressed for the first time to see an organization actually caring about the Down River community. I thought I was the only one, but and unfortunately I'm not, but it was really good to see you know, communities getting more involved with the downriver communities, getting involved with the uh, cities, you know, the transit agencies. And I just want to say, John, you do a great job of what you do. And I just want to say thank you for inviting me to come down and uh, speak with you and int introduce me to some of your team a little bit. And I look forward to being in touch with you. Great. Thanks. Wonderful. Um, John, any ca final comments that, that you'd like to share before we wrap up? Yes. Um, transportation, a robust transportation system is an access issue. Our community is not meeting the needs of individuals with disabilities without a robust system that connects individuals to different communities. So an individual with disability can go where they wanna go, when they wanna go. Um, so this, what SMART is doing, what DDOT is doing and all these transit providers are working on um, are, are amazing steps in the right way. But we do need to look at these millages and get these millages passed so we can connect communities and so people can continue to travel and live independent lives. Oops, Megan, you're muted. It's not it's not a zoom until someone forgets that. <laughs> uh, Deborah or Roberta, any final comments that you guys would like to share? Um, I would just like to say also thank you for having me on the panel tonight. I hope that we can help uh, anyone who's listening uh, or participating or listening to the recording in the future. We uh, are happy to help people and take the time to call us. It would be great. Um, we can help you with um, when you can't find uh, room on the smart or if you need to go into other counties. Um, or stretcher service or whatever the needs might be. Um, I agree with John that always we need more accessible transportation. Um, so uh, it's, it would be great to have that. And if you call us, you very well may speak to Deborah Price Ryan, our mobility <laughs> specialist. And Deborah, do you have anything to add? No, I just wanna thank everyone for the, the invitation. Um, great job that everybody does with transportation. I'm a newcomer, but I, I have the passion now. Thank you. Excellent. And I really do think My Ride 2 does an excellent job because of some of the patchwork uh, that we have in the region. It isn't always the most seamless uh, transportation choices. Uh, if uh, there are places that, that don't have, that aren't part of the systems, um, but there's also, um, nonprofit providers and for-profit providers and a lot of other folks. Uh, so uh, Roberta and her team do an excellent job of helping. You, you focus on seniors and people with disabilities, but you'll help just about anyone figure out oh, how to get their ride, true. how, how to get where true. they need we, to go. We, we can't say no and say <laughs> <laughs> We care um, too much. <laughs> or we right. care just the right amount. <laughs> there you go. Um, Ebony, I believe is a part of Peak and wanted to make a comment. Uh, what did you wanna, it's, what would you like to share with us, Ebony? 
wanted to say thank you for um having me on here and um also I wanted to um say um I'm a little like I'm self but like I learned a lot about advocating for people with disabilities. And really think it's a good opportunity that you're letting us be on this meeting with you. We are certainly happy to and it's great to have um, young folks like yourself, not only learning how to be independent and mobile uh, on your own, but also to be able to um, uh, to, to yeah, speak out on behalf of uh, of yourself and the community and folks like you throughout the community. Um, now we're now that we're trying to wrap up. Now everybody's ready to jump in with comments. Um, Kathy um, is going to add a question or comment. Um, Kathy, would you like to join us for a few, for a moment? Um, yes, I just want to say thank you for doing this, Megan. I know Megan from serving on the Citizens Advisory Committee um, in the past, and I'm glad that progress has been made, but there is still work to be done. That's all I wanted to say. <laughs> And if it's all right for me to share, yeah, uh, Kathy does have a, a vision disability and, and uses a lot of the transit services and is a great uh, advocate and activist as well. Um, I'm sorry we're running out of time for, for comments, uh, any additional comments. Kristen, would you like to make some final remarks before we have to wrap up? After you unmute. Uh, I, I'll just say that I'll keep being rushed when I I'll have to when I want to talk about transit because there's so many, so many stories I could tell and so many, you know, um, reasons why I uh, support um, a, a more robust transit system. Um, and uh, I also wanted to mention because Claire asked in the chat, um, just in case anybody didn't see that, um, that if you if you do know someone um, that has any difficulties with accessing um, vaccinations, um, COVID-19, but other vaccinations as well. Um, we That is what we do. We help people get access to that. So um, all you have to do is call Disability Rights Michigan and tell them what you need. Excellent, excellent. Thank you so much for being such a great uh, advocate for transportation, housing, healthcare, so many other uh, important areas. Uh, well, I really appreciate everyone's time. I think a lesson here is there are uh, a, a variety of important services available throughout our region to ensure that people can get where they need to go, um, whether that's smart services um, or the other, other services throughout our, our community that My Ride 2 can help connect folks to. Um, they're definitely not perfect. They don't get you everywhere. Um, and so there are a lot of us who are working to advocate to have more options, to get uh, to have more transit that will go more places uh, all throughout the community. Um, uh, if you are in Oakland or Macomb County, uh, or if you are in certain communities in Wayne and are uh, a voter, please make sure you learn about the, the county public transit millages that will be on the November ballot. Um, and you can even get your absentee ballot uh, as early as the beginning of October. So you have plenty of time to review it, learn about those issues and be an educated voter. So thank you so much. And we will uh, certainly look forward to hosting uh, other events like this in the future and bringing one, all these wonderful activists together. Thanks so much and have a great night. Thank you. Bye-bye.